What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Got another fun unbagging uh, the Bank and Creek bag. Now, check this out. Lurnet actually sent me a shirt, Bank and Creek shirt. Pretty dang sweet because, uh, you know, I'm a Bank Fish and Nerd and I'm a Lure Nerd, so it kind of goes hand in hand. We're going to take a closer look at this. And uh, as always, I'll be giving this away at the end. So stay till the end, find out how you can win, and uh, let's see what they got in here. Some cool ones today. Okay, starting with the front here. Okay, so we got the booklet and some stickers. Got a Rebel sticker, one of the old favorites, the Pop R. Give you a lure net sticker. And pretty cool, they do this, the, uh, the lure sheet that kind of shows you the when, where, why, how. Just kind of an overview of everything that comes in here, some little tips on how to use it. And they even gave you a pretty cool little uh, drawing here. That's by uh, Uncle Frank, Frank Scalish. We had him on the show a while back. As nice a dude as can be, uh, he does some of the custom painting for these guys over there at LureNet. So they show you how to use this one, this prop bait, but we're gonna look at these closer. First up is the War Eagle Buzz Bait. One of my all time favorite buzz baits. This is a great one. They gave you the cord rounds here. Great little finesse size. I throw this one quite a bit and I really like on the War Eagle Buzz Baits how it has the two different length skirts there. I think it was like a Strike King, one of the old KVDs or something like that. It was one of the first spinner baits I ever used that had like the two different skirt lengths and I really liked it because you don't have to worry about putting a plastic on there. This extra long skirt in back acts as a plastic back there when you pop it and pulse it. Um, so I like that one. Silver and white, little red head there, looks like some bleeding gills. Perfect for a little shad or bait fish imitation. And again, that little quarter round size, just a little bit more finesse as compared to some of the three eighths or half ounce that have the really big blades with a lot of noise. Sometimes that's what you want, but you know, when there's just, you know, just a tiny bit of ripple on the water, something like this is perfect. Okay, they've got some interesting plastics in here. Bobby Garland, they call this the pile driver, two and a half inches. This color they call thread fin shant, and kind of interesting, like this is, reminds me of a little miniature, uh, little biffle bug. Gosh, I had a brain fart there. I couldn't remember what else, but it looks like almost, a, you know, a little tiny biffle bug. I don't know how you'd fish this if you put this on just a little jig head for crappie and jig it around stuff. Um, I suppose you could put it on like a beetle spin looking thing and swim it. I would assume this would have a really good kick in back, little kick on the sides. Cool deal. I don't know that I've seen a little crappie lure looking uh, thing like that. I'd give that a throw. Next up, we've got the Cotton Cordell Crazy Shed. Now, I like that they show you in here. There's only 300 of these made. I'll leave my link below. I do have a link where you can get 15% off. They were nice enough to uh, give you subscribe, Fish and Friends, that. And they do this every two months. This has only got a couple days left, and this one's done. I know. Give us more uh, heads up there, Debo. But anyway, they'll show you the custom colors that are in here, and you can only get these out of the Bank and Creek bag. So if you went to just the regular net, lure net site, you can't get these. So this one, for example, is custom color only in the bag. This one they call Pumpkin Seed, and again, uh, Frank Scalish is the guy that helps them with the colors and stuff, does this custom stuff. He does an awesome job. You know, obviously he will turn in his samples, and then, and then they're able to recreate it. But look at how freaking sick that thing is. Pumpkin Seed color did an awesome job on it, and you can see it's got two propellers on it. So I've used stuff like the, what is it, the Rapala Skitter Prop, I think, just has one. I've got an old one from when I was a kid. It was like a black and white kind of skeleton-y looking that had a couple of these. I ended up taking one of the blades off, but you take these, and as this shows here, you just pull it in uh, like six inch moves to make some bubbles, so it'll go <laughs> Kind of like if you were popping a Whopper Plopper type deal. I suppose you could just cast it out and reel it. I've not seen folks do that whenever I see them fish these, they do this. Now, I've not had a ton of luck on this type of lure. I've seen other folks that have. I know Jacob Wheeler was fishing that skitter prop in an MLF and absolutely cleaned up on it. So something like this can uh, really do good. Do better or good. Gooder or investments. Well, heck, since we're talking about fun custom colors, probably my favorite in the entire bag the Super Spook Boyo. Now, y'all saw me uh, in a couple videos fishing this this year uh, as another custom color, actually, from LureNet. But this is a neat one. Uh, this one they call Bleeding Pearl. Now, I actually picked up one of these uh, on the side because I like this specific bait so much. And look at that little beauty. My goodness. It's got the uh, kind of greenish uh, with the gold sparkle through it. it. Goes into that lavender kind of purple. A little bit of a yellowy chartreuse line. Pearl belly, a little bit of red on the throat there, and then, you know, the bleeding shad type dots. Those hooks are sharp. And it comes with a split ring. I hate when, uh, like, walking baits and poppers don't come with that. Put them with the split ring, dang it. Anyhow, love the looks of this one. does look like a custom lure, just like something, you know, I would paint and put out. Very neat little deal. See there, it's got the head and mark on it. Super Spook Boyo, just a downsized version of, like, the Super Spook Junior, a little bit smaller. And, of course... That one knock, hard knocker sound that everybody loves off the spook. Comment below and let me know what's your favorite topwater walking bait. The Super Spook Junior specifically um, is definitely a top three of mine. There's a number of really good ones out there. 
uh, but this one has kind of grown on me as being a little bit smaller. Now just to show you in reference, this is a KVD Sexy Dog. This is one of the new uh, saltwater colors had to get because of that purple, but you can see there, look at the size difference on the larger Sexy Dog versus something like this. This is an awesome little pond or small lake lure. Or even if you're just in those places where everybody's throwing those big topwater walking baits, trying to mimic maybe some little bit smaller bait or a little bit more finesse presentation, this baby will do it. Well, the next one, everybody should know this one. You can't talk about a popping topwater lure. And you also can't open it either because it's a weird package. Can't talk about a topwater popping bait without bringing up the old school pop R. Man, this is one that I grew up throwing. Love this one. It was like the black and silver of the baby bass. Man, that was it back in the day. Good looking little, what do they call this one? Shimmer brim. You can see it's kind of a translucent color. It's got that pearly... It's got the, of course, red cupped mouth. And the thing I like about these, the pop bar, it's got that lip that kind of goes a little bit forward so you can really bloop, bloop. You know, that slow where it gives that big bubble that the fish, you know, it sounds like a fish attacking at the top, I guess, gives that blub bubble. Or you can kind of walk this or pop it a little bit faster and give that kind of spitting out the front where it looks like a fish is hitting something on top of the water. But great little top water popper. You can see it does come with the little feathered treble there. It's got some like flashaboo in it. I remember I had a number of these. They would get all old and gross. You'd leave like the moss and stuff and then they get all hard and disgusting. <laughs> oh man, back today I did not take care of my lures very well. But this one, you know, I, I suppose you could tie a loop knot. I personally like to put a snap or, or a larger split ring on the front. That's just me. I want to have a little bit more action in case I want to walk this. So cool little custom color there. Love the old pop bar. Definitely one that uh, I appreciate as being one of the fun old lures. All right, a couple more in here. I'm just going to take these out. Now, there is a Debo sticker. Like I said, I am giving this bag away, so somebody will get one of the Debo stickers. And what do we have? Okay, a couple different ones here from Jean LaRue. So the Ned Rig Inchworm. Okay, we'll look at that. And then the Ned Rig Pig Head Jig. Rolls off your tongue. Okay, starting out these little pig heads. So these are a 16th. I'm not going to rig this up. Like I said, I'm giving it away. But these are kind of interesting. I don't know that I've really seen a deal like this. So it's this finesse football head deal it's got the wire uh you know like weed guard there to help you say a little bit more weedless not get snagged and then this kind of triangular bait keeper so as you rig your plastic up over it and kind of pinch it that triangle piece there will hold it and allow it to not go back now when i first saw these i had to take a peek in the bag just to see what was in here before the unboxing when i first saw these i wasn't thinking a ned rig but i do see the the head is larger you could rig that up on there let's do it like this Rig that up on there, and that's kind of what it would look like. So with that football head, drag it around rock, pop it on the bottom, drag it around. Kind of a cool deal there. Now, I noticed with uh, the uh, the plastic here, it's got like a very small little boot tail. First thing that come to mind for me was, dude, this looks like a sick little chatterbait trailer. It's like, I would say a little four-inch bait, but pretty skinny. The head of it's a little bit bigger, so as you thread that up onto the, uh, the chatterbait, oh, let's just see, do I have one? As you thread that up onto the chatterbait, it's got enough meat there to hold it on. And the back tail, it's not like it's got a huge back, you know, crazy tail. It's kind of got these like segmented ribs underneath. So this is really going to be moving with the chatterbait. I would like to try it for that. Now I'm giving this away, but maybe I'll pick up some of these in the future. Kind of a cool deal. I've never fished these before or seen them. All right, so the crappie heads, they call these the Moglo heads, 1 16th. You can see they're just kind of your standard little crappie jig head. This, I think, is really neat. So this is the Bobby Garland, the original baby shad, two inches. Not joking, they call this purple monkey. So it's like that monkey milk color. I just learned about this from Nick Rundle over at the bait cave, that monkey milk that I didn't know about, that kind of whitish blue holographic with some like black, purple flake in there. That one looks really neat. So, you know, popping this around, you know, your standard do like a little float rig like that on a bobber popping that around that's pretty standard i used to throw these back in the day there's the little ones i forget what they're called the little uh minnowy deals that look like this cool little plastic for doing some pan fish and that's the cool part about this and why i really appreciate it because it's focused on bank and creek you know so many of the stuff for your lures and companies out there are really focusing on you know these hardcore tournament guys and win your tournament and there's nothing wrong with that but so many of us you know are just weekend anglers who want to go out and fish and a lot of us don't have a fancy rig like that so fishing from a boat wading the creek whatever it is you got different ways to do it you know it just doesn't mean you have to have a, a fancy rig or boat to go out and do that so i appreciate that they do this now again i will be giving uh, all this away the bag and everything away comment below uh, and just tell me what your favorite lure out of all these were now again for me definitely has to be this little boyo spook they work great i like the little finesse size and that color 
that kind of green, almost a Tennessee shad look to it, the little purple iridescence, uh, is the winner for me. So comment below and let me know. Today's subscribe fish and friend is Jeff Gerald. I saw he just caught a gigantic uh, catfish. And uh, heck, maybe you all could win this and catch a gigantic fish of your own. So comment below and let me know what your favorite is. In uh, just a couple weeks, I'll pin the winner. Uh, and I'll get that sent out. So if I haven't said it before, I love you all. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.